What is up gamers, Fcast and Chill here. Today I'm going to be talking about the Hollowed Sepulchre in great detail. I plan on going through all the different iterations of each floor and how to optimally do each one. I also plan on talking about the mechanics of the Sepulchre and just how to really practice and improve at it, as well as what gear you should bring in. So let's go ahead and start off with the gear. You can see here I have essentially all the hollowed items equipped. The hammer, uh, holy symbol, grapple, focus, and ring. Really the only one of these that you need is the ring as it helps you uh, from taking damage and also makes it so that you're teleported back quicker after you take a hit. So when you start doing the sepulcher, I would recommend looting up until you get the ring. And then after that, you don't really need to loot anymore unless you want to. Since I'm an Iron Man, I typically loot the bridges as well as the portals on floors 4 and 5 since those have some really good loot and they're really fast to go through. But in general, you don't need to worry about looting too much if you just want the agility XP. Also, you should have either a holy symbol or the hallowed symbol here so that you can replenish your run energy at the end of each floor. So as for the XP rates, once you're 92 plus agility, you can easily get 95k plus agility xp an hour if you have plenty of practice and I, I said easily get that but that that might be a little bit of a misconception i've done over a thousand kill count of the sepulcher across my two accounts and i have a ton of practice but i'm going to try to show you how you can also gain the skills that you need to do that yourself and get the practice so first i'm going to start talking about some of the mechanics let's get into that There's five different obstacles throughout the sepulchre that we need to talk about. First, there's darts or arrows, there's fire, there's teleporters, swords, and then lightning. And we're gonna talk about each one of those. First, I'm going to start off with the fire. So the flames actually behave differently depending on what floor you're on. Floors one through four, the flames will stay out for one tick longer than floor five. So let's see how to deal with the flames on floors one through four. Your goal with dealing with flames should be to click to run right before the flames disappear. That is, you wanna to click to start moving while the flames are still out, and then your character will start moving on the next tick as the flames disappear. So for floors one through four, it does take a bit to get the timing down, but after the flame is completely out, so it's fully extended, you wait about a tick or so and then click, and then you can go and um, keep moving. Floor five, however, you could see here, these are a lot faster. What I do on floor five is as soon as the flames are fully extended, that's when I click. So we can watch the flame extend and then click here, and that's when you'll be able to run through it successfully. Now let's talk about the next thing, dealing with the lightning. The lightning's actually pretty easy to deal with. Uh, if your true tile, that is that blue square that's moving as my character moves, if that never goes onto the places where the lightning is, then you'll never get shocked. It's that simple. So what I like to do is just make sure that my true tile indicator is not going to go onto any of those, uh, those areas that are getting shocked as I run past the lightning. Now, as you may see with the pathing, your true tile indicator can move two tiles within one game tick. So if you're running, it'll move two tiles. Um, it, you can do it diagonally or two up and one over or just two straight in the direction you're going. So you can use this to easily avoid the lightning bolts. Next, let's talk about the teleporters. The teleporters are similar to the lightning in that it'll only affect you if your true tile indicator moves onto the teleporter. That means if there's a yellow portal in front of you and you run past it, you'll move two tiles and then it won't affect you. So the yellow ones will teleport you backwards a considerable length, while the blue ones will teleport you forwards. One thing to note is right after you get teleported, you'll be invincible to being hit by any other obstacles for one game tick. So as you can see here, I get teleported and then I'm able to run through the arrows without having to worry about being hit. So in general, the teleporters are very useful for getting great times. If you can use the blue teleporters to launch yourself forward, it can save a considerable amount of time. And as we see on floor five, it's actually necessary to get past some of the obstacles early on in the floor. All right, so after the teleporters, let's talk about the swords. 
This is one of the simpler obstacles. They'll move in a, um, and you can just avoid them. If your true tile doesn't touch the sword or the box under the sword, you'll be safe. If the box underneath the sword comes into contact with your true tile, then you'll be teleported back to the start. Now for the last thing, we're going to talk about the darts. And this is going to be a lot more in depth than the other obstacles. So for the other obstacles that are moving, we said that as long as your true tile does not touch the obstacle, then you'll be totally safe. However, that's not true for the darts. If you run two tiles at once and you're not running straight across, then you actually will still be hit by the darts if they're within one tick of you. So let me actually demonstrate this. You can see here as I run not straight across, but back or forward a little bit, I'm actually still getting hit even though my true tile indicator is never in contact with the darts. So that's a little frustrating uh, to learn and the darts are definitely the most difficult part for learners. So there's a couple ways around this. One is if you're about to be hit by a dart and you just move one tile instead of two and as long as your true tile does not come in contact with the darts and you're just moving one tile at a time, you will be safe. So you can see I'm doing that here. I'm moving over one tile instead of two and I'm not getting hit. Another thing you can do is you can actually run straight across. So if you run two tiles to the left or right, right as the darts are coming to you, right before they hit you, then for some reason you'll be safe. I don't know why the game works that way. That's just how it works. So if you're running and you're toward the end of a dart section and they're coming out at you, then you can just run two tiles across and you should be safe. One more mechanic I want to mention at the Sepulcher is that whenever you enter a new floor or go anywhere where your screen turns black, sometimes you can actually start moving a little bit earlier if you spam click the mini map. So on some of the floors as I enter, I actually spam click the mini map in a certain spot and that will help me start running quicker and that will actually let you to make some cycles that you wouldn't otherwise, and it can save a ton of time. This is particularly noticeable on floor four, and we'll see that when I get to the individual floors. One more thing I should mention is that the floors, if you enter them and no one else is currently in that floor, it will always start on the same cycle. However, if there's somebody already on that floor of the sepulcher and you enter, then the room will be off cycle and things will be a bit more complicated. For the off cycle rooms, you'll have to think on the fly and use what you've learned to get through them quickly. But what I'm going to be focusing on with these floor demonstrations is if no one else is in the room, this is how to complete the floor in the optimal time. So let's go ahead and get into that and start going through the iterations of each floor. Uh, as an overview, there's four different iterations for floors one and two, two iterations of floors three and four, and then one iteration of floor five. So floor five is always the same. And which iteration you get is just random every time. So yeah, let's go ahead and start with the floor one iterations and show how to do them. All right, for the first floor one iter iteration, it's gonna be 32 seconds. So let's go ahead and run in. So, um, I'm gonna run in and then I spam click on floor one near the health bar up here, okay? Um, the reason I spam click there is because one of the floor one iterations, you have to be spam clicking to make the cycle, but this isn't that one, so it's fine. Um, luckily, you know, spam clicking doesn't affect the other cycle, so it's not a big deal. So here you could see I run to this tile here that I have marked, and then one tick before the flames are gone, I click and run here. Also, my tile markers are a bit weird in a lot of the floors. I'll still upload them to the video description, but you don't have to follow my tile markers. They work for me and I know what they mean, but they're kind of weird. Also, you can touch these obelisks if you have a holy symbol or the hallowed symbol and it'll restore your run energy. All right, iteration two of floor one. So I'm gonna run in again, and then again, I'm gonna spam click up near the heart because I always do that for floor one. And this is the one where I needed to. So this one here, you can actually beat the sword if you were spam clicking on your mini map. So you can see just barely, I will run past the sword because my true tile was never in contact with it. And then I'll stop right here, wait for the flames, click right before they go away, and then just run past these darts. Luckily, I didn't have to worry about the darts hitting me there. And then also on this part when the screen's black, I move my mouse around to try to find the platform because it'll say jump platform before. 
All right, so f iteration three for floor one. Again, I just run in on the right. It doesn't matter if you run in on the right or left here, by the way. All right, I'm gonna spam click. All right, so then I realize it's this iteration. So I just run up here past the darts. And this iteration is actually the fastest iteration for floor one. So I'm gonna run over here and then we're gonna wait at the flames, click one tick before they come off. Go here, wait, click one tick before they go off. Also uh, note that you can run five ticks in between the flame attacks. So that means 10 tiles because you can run two tiles each tick. All right, so that was that floor one iteration. Let's look at the last one here. So this one's going to be 32 seconds. Again, I'm spam clicking up here on my mini map, but that did not help for this one. All right. So first I run right in front of the flames and then stop. Then click right before the flames go away to this tile. Wait here, then click here. And then I'm, I'm gonna be able to beat the sword and make it there. Yep. And then I just have to dodge these darts here. So after that one goes past, then I'll just run to the end here. And then as I jump down, I try to position my mouse on the jump platform and then go through. All right, now let's look at floor two. So this is the first iteration of floor two. It's gonna be 34 seconds. So this is actually the, the fastest iteration of floor two. So we have to dodge these darts here first, which should be easy enough. And then there's yellow teleporters here. Remember the yellow ones will launch you backwards. So you have to wait here for the sword and then when it gets there, then you run past, run all the way around down to the lower level. And again, sometimes I'll like fletch and do stuff on these long stretches of running. You don't have to by any means, but if you wanna get some bonus XP in, now's a good time to do it. All right, so now I'm spam clicking on the mini map. I got unlucky there with the dart and had to run off to the side to dodge it, but that's all right. It only made me lose one tick, so still close enough. And then you can see my time here will be 34 seconds. All right, let's look at the next floor two iteration. All right, so this one here, I'm gonna run down here. Also note that you don't need to spam click your mini map for floor two to make any of the cycles. That's only something that you need to do on floors one and four. All right, so here you have to wait a tick for the sword and then you can follow it. If you go, if you just run immediately, then you'll end up running into the sword and hitting it. Again, I'm spam clicking my mini map right here. I'll try to run on the blue tiles as much as possible because those will teleport me forward if they turn on. Doing a little bit of fletching while I wait and then running to the end here. And then at the end of floor two, you're going to want to touch one of the obelisks to restore your run energy. All right, here's the third iteration. So, okay, I'm gonna run up here, pass this sword. Again, this is a good time to do some fletching or something else. So I'm gonna run around this corner. And then if you stop on the tile that I stop on and then run forward, you can see my true tile just goes on all the blue markers. So you have no chance of being teleported backwards there. You can make it through all these flames in one go if you do uh, start running on the right tick and then hop down here. And then this sword, if you haven't messed up, you'll be able to get to that tile that I have marked up there. And then you can go forward and run around the sword without losing any time. <clears throat> and then again, you know, activate the obelisk to restore your run energy at the end of the floor. Now let's keep going. This is the last iteration of floor two. This one's 44 seconds, so it's the worst iteration. So you have to stop here for the flames, then run to this last tile I have marked. And then right before the flames go off, you can click that one and run up there, get a little more fletching in. Okay, I have to go around this dart because it was um, on the column that I was on. All right, and then again, you can run on just the blue teleporters here, so you have no chance of being teleported backwards. All right, and then I'm gonna just spam click up here on the mini map. Can make it to those tiles before the flames turn back on. Right before they turn off, click. And then stop right here, and then right before the flames turn off, click again. 
and that should come out to 44 seconds. All right, so now let's go on to floor three. This is where it gets a little more challenging and interesting. So floor three, this iteration will be 51 with some good luck. If your luck isn't great, 55. So first you need to run past these darts as quickly as possible and then try to get up to this part and then run through these flames. If you do it right and don't get unlucky with the darts, you can run through the flames no problem. Then once the sword launches, you can try to get teleported forward like I did and then just keep on moving. Then again, run past these darts as quickly as you can. You can see when I run to dodge the darts to the side, I'm always making sure I'm running two tiles forward as well as to the side to keep moving forward as quickly as possible. Then when I jump down here, I'm gonna wait for the flames. So I'm gonna go up here. These alternate left and right. One tick before they turn off, I, I go forward. I usually zoom out here to see where the darts are and then just run to the end here. So this is going to take some practice, but it's very doable once you've put in the time. And again, click the obelisk to restore your run energy for the later floor. Now let's look at the other floor three iteration. This one can be anywhere from 51 seconds to a minute one second, depending on your luck with the teleporters. So here you can just run past these first flames to the middle section, wait here, run here to this tile that I clicked on right when your true tile gets there, then you can click again and you'll run just past the sword. Then when we get up here, we'll have to run past these teleporters. So the teleporters, I usually try to get teleported forward if I can, but it's not totally necessary. If you don't get teleported forward or backward, then you can barely make it past the sword and then past these flames with perfect timing without stopping running. If you struggle a little bit on the dart section, then you might have to wait a cycle for those flames or the sword. But you can see I made it down here and then I wasn't down here quite early enough to run all the way past the first section of flames, but still good enough. I can still run this far and then move over to the side and clear it in about 55 seconds. <clears throat> All right, so now on to floor four. Floor, floor four, whenever I enter, I will spam click on the mini map because uh, about where my mouse marker is right there. So we'll see that in action. So I'm spam clicking there. And that's because with this cycle with the lightning, you can actually beat the sword if you're spam clicking right when you go through the door. So you can make it to the second row of teleporters and get teleported forward past the sword. Because remember, once you get teleported, you're actually invincible for one tick afterwards. Again, here, try to get teleported forward if you can, like I am. Um, you can save a lot of time if you do. Uh, and then here on these flame walls, you know, you just remember you can move for five ticks between flames. So you'll want to count that. So flames go off, and then I can move one, two, three, four, five. So I had plenty of time to get past there. Again, here, try to get teleported forward if you can. I don't play perfectly here. I think I actually mess up a little bit. Um, I could have gotten teleported forward, but that's fine. Again, on these long running stretches, always try to be moving forward as you can. There I had to run to the left because the two darts came out at once and I would have gotten hit otherwise. So I lost a little bit of time there, but not much at all. And then here you have to wait for the sword to launch and then you can chase it up here. And the reason you can chase the sword is because there's these teleporters right here. So then you wait for the teleporters to come on, run right past it, had to run to the left there to dodge those. And then I'm just gonna keep going, try to get teleported forward here if possible, turn your camera around, and then there's the end of floor four. And I think that should come out to the low 120s. Again, this one's gonna depend a little bit on RNG with the darts and the teleporters, but you should be able to get low 120s if you get decent luck. Here's the other iteration of floor two. This one you'll get like a time in the low 130s if you do it perfectly. So you run into the middle of these flames initially, wait for them to go. Then I click on that tile so you can see the gray highlighted one first. And then after that, then you can run forward to this next one that I just clicked on and then up here and wait for the sword. Once the sword passes you, then you can click where I have my mouse cursor. So this next part is going to really test your ability to dodge darts while still running forward, but watch how I do it. Every time I'm moving forward, I'm still moving, every time I move to the side, I'm still moving forward as much as possible. So you can see I moved diagonal there, I moved forward to and to the side, and then I'm gonna to run to the left there to dodge that last bit. Again, that's going to take a good amount of practice, but once you do it enough, it'll be pretty easy and second nature. 
All right, and then we're gonna go down here. I spam click my mini map to get running faster. And then I usually run out here to see if I can get teleported and it was on, so I can. So I got teleported past and then I'm just gonna keep running. A lot of the time there you won't get lucky and won't be able to teleport past the sword. So you'll just have to wait for it to come back and then you can run forward. Again here, I don't think I play perfectly on some of these teleporters, uh, but you know, it's good enough. There we go. All right, and then use these teleporters here when they turn on and then just run to the end. Do some fletching if you have the darts for it. All right, and then you wanna to definitely touch this obelisk to restore your run energy before going into floor five. Floor five just has one iteration. You can get between 205 to 212 with perfect play depending on your luck. On this account, I actually haven't beat like a 209. I, I do have a 205 on my other account, but you have to get pretty lucky with the teleporters to get that. So we first run past these flames. Remember the flames are one tick faster, so you wanna click right when they extend. Right after the sword comes here, you run to this teleporter and then run to this next teleporter and make sure you get teleported forward. The swords are very fast on floor five, so if you don't use the teleporters, then you'll get caught and likely get hit. All right, this part here has a lot of teleporters. If you get really good luck here, you can get a faster cycle for the rest of the floor. But um, as you can see here, I didn't really get teleported forward. I just was making sure to dodge the darts. So I'm gonna be in the normal cycle and likely end up with about a 210 if I play well. So again, right when the flames are fully extended, that's when you click because they're faster than the flames on all the other floors. Fully extended, I click. And then here you just run through the lightning like this. I'm gonna stop here, wait for the flames to fully extend, then click. Again, wait for the flames, click. And then if you're at this point in the cycle, you can just keep running, the sword will beat you out there. And then here, you're gonna use these teleporters, and remember you're invincible for a tick after the teleporter. So you can see I ran under the sword there, but it didn't hit me because I had just teleported. Now here's the hard part with floor five that a lot of people struggle with. There's really some of everything. There's lightning, teleporters, and darts everywhere, and even some fire. So really you just have to use everything you've learned. You can see I got a little unlucky there and got teleported backwards, but that's all right. So you just keep on running and dodging the darts using the techniques we talked about earlier in the video. And remember to just run through the flames as soon as you see them fully extended, that means you can run and they're going to go away. I like to keep my camera pretty zoomed out compared to what a lot of people do, but that's because I like to be able to see the darts way more ahead of time than a lot of other people can, because it gives me a lot more time to think and react how I need to approach the floor. But that's it really. Um, I bring a couple energy potions with me, you see, just so I can sip my energy if I mess up and my um, run energy's low. You could bring stams too, but I wouldn't recommend it on an Iron Man. Then let's loot this coffin and see what I get. Uh, blood runes better than nothing but let's exit and there we have a 555 not a bad time at all i probably average i'd say around 610 or so when i'm focused um, and if i'm looting floors four and five then i probably average closer to seven minutes so that amounts to you know something we're in the ballpark of 100k xp an hour when i'm not looting and then when i am looting more like 85k an hour and remember, you know, watching this video, it might seem pretty easy, but I've put a ton of time into doing Sepulchre, and you'll definitely need to practice a large amount of time to be able to do these floors as, you know, smoothly as I am right here. But it's a really rewarding mini game, and I honestly, I think it's the most fun non-PVM in the game. So I definitely recommend trying to learn and master it. But that's really all I have for you guys, so good luck out there with the Sepulchre grind. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed the video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. It'll really help grow the channel. Also, if you have any other guides you want to see, please leave a comment below. Take care and good luck on those grinds.